Thanks very much for um, this opportunity to explain the Tamora Master Plan for the Railway Precinct. I thought I'd, what I'd quickly do before we get into the Master Plan is just go through the analysis plan as a bit of a background and understanding for anyone that hasn't been involved in any of the consultation to understand how we arrived at where we did with the Master Plan. So um, the analysis plan gives the overview of the entire site, which includes down to Loftus Street and Park Street as well. That's the dark blue line that you can see on the screen there that tacks in the site. Um, <clears throat> what we attempted to do prior to the, um, the consultation day was to sort of write down our own thoughts after walking the site with and after having discussions with um, council count, um, and council staff um, was to write down our views of the site and our thinking about it. Um, and then after the consultation day, when people gave us more information, we added that information onto the plan. So it's just a very um, sort of high level overview of the site that's talking about things like existing fences, um, areas requiring <laughs> where we imagine there is a requirement for remediation because of con potential contamination from the railway sites. Uh, view lines, like important sites that can be seen from within the site, and also the greater sort of connection to the context. So it's just a really big, broad overview of the site, which was the analysis plan. It was a second analysis plan and looking at the movements across the site, a particular reference to um, areas where pedestrians are currently using the site and where there may be a bit of conflict as far as uh, vehicles also using the site. So the blue lines are, are highlighting um, existing road, uh, exist, so the blue lines are uh, highlighting the existing stormwater that we know is running across the site. That sort of became an issue through the analysis mapping phase, the issues associated with um, stormwater on site. So we've mapped those areas. Um, the pedestrian links are shown on the site in, um, in yellow and also with the understanding that we have heavy vehicle access routes in both Victoria and Polaris Street as well. This also highlights where things don't connect up yet. So I think that sort of gave us an understanding of things that needed to be further connected to sort of enable the site to be connected up for it to function. Leading on from those analysis plans, we then just came up with a schematic plan, which is very much a blob diagram but it was what we went to the community with the with the um, on the consultation so that we could discuss with them sort of really broad, big sort of high level sort of thinking about how we saw the site. And then we asked for the community on that day to give their feedback and comment on that. Um, I think most of the feedback really solidified what we thought we could do here on the site. And we came up with a series of aims um, on the schematic plan, which we then followed through with into the master plan. So I think when we get to the master plan, there'll no doubt be parts of that that some people won't, you know, agree with or won't think it's quite right. But I think if we can relate the decision making back to these aims, perhaps that will make more sense in terms of how we've arrived at those ideas. So our broad aims were to connect with the Wiradjuri culture of the region as an integral part of the entrance to the site. And this is this area here on Park Street. This was an area in particular that we discussed with the tomorrow high school students so that was you know a, a very um a very sort of front of mind um aim for the site adaptive reuse is this sort of purple area and that is really referring to um the areas really most directly associated with the railway station itself and the railway use mm. um, and we were using the words adaptive reuse and to celebrate to celebrate the history of the railway of the site so the adaptive reuse to encourage community and tourism use and to celebrate the railway history of the site was the thinking on, on those. The blue areas was to consider the potential. These areas um, are most likely to be contaminated um, because of past use. And I, when I sort of say contaminated, it just means, you know, anything that could have been used on the site that we don't know about and we don't know how things were um, disposed of. Um, so it could be anything from oil, to um, metal that's still on the site, um, to chemical residue. We just don't really know. So when we sort of say contaminants, it's just because we don't actually know what might be there on site. So the blue areas are really referencing this idea to consider the potential of areas requiring remediation into landscape zones for, for community use in the future. And then the green zones in many ways are the zones that link it all together. So that's the creation of um, 
connection for walking and bike trails, congregation spaces, shelters and opportunities for art. Um, embedded within the ideas of the design for these areas is the principles of uh, principles of equal access for all, meaning the pathways we're always trying to achieve um, a gradient that means that anyone can use the paths. Um, safety by design, so then we're not creating threatening spaces or spaces that you can't see through at night. And also the thoughts of dark sky principles um, when we're thinking about lighting and using lighting across the site. Um, these sort of red um, targets that we're sort of showing across the site were very much areas that we um, targeted or, or had a look at as being areas that could really be activated. Sites that are very visual from certain points that if there was something there, people would be more likely to move and, and sort of move through the site to connect with them. Um, the red is this idea of resolving the issues of pedestrian crossings and also the hierarchy of use through the site. It's very much the same up here at Polara Street, just in terms of there's there's no safe or formal pedestrian crossing on the Polara Street side at the moment. Um, and the other issue, as I mentioned in the analysis phase, was um, stormwater management and really considering if there's some way that the master plan could help resolve some of those things, that this sort of broader landscape area, if we could use the water to run through the site in a better way, would that be helpful for the for the whole of tomorrow, really? So based on um, those, um, starting with those, we then moved on to the master plan. The master plan um, sheet is just one big sheet that sort of shows shows the entire site um, down from Britannia Street down here to Victoria Street through to Loftus, Parks and Polaris Street. So when you're sort of looking at that overall big master plan, it's referring to the sheets that break it up. It's kind of quite difficult to get this to all line up on, on, a, on pages because it's actually such a big site, such a big lineal site to sort of get it to a scale on pages where it, it makes sense. So that the pages that you're looking at are one is to 500 at A1 um, to give you an understanding of scale. So I'm gonna start on the left-hand side of the Britannia Street, Victoria Street end and then move to the north towards the mill. Um, so this part of the site, each of the plans, are, actually, sorry, this, this plan has got the legend for the hard landscape, so everything to do with hard landscaping. On LO6, we have the legend to do with soft landscaping, so that's all the planting ideas and sort of thoughts about planting. This has got the legend for all of the hard landscaping on the site. Each of the plans has an overview that gives you an understanding of what each of the pages is about in relation to the site. Um, so this is the site of the historic roundhouse. And on one of the analysis plans, you'll notice a blue area around this site. It's a heritage, it's listed as a heritage site. I know there's probably different, different, differing thoughts about the roundhouse. Um, I understand it was, it was taken away from site and dismantled some time ago. I know that there are some people who are really keen for that to come back and there are others that don't think um, it's, it's necessary that it, it's gone. I think what we were attempting to do with the master plan was to show um, the idea that if it did come back it, it, where it fits on site, historically where it did sit, um, and if it's just not possible for that to happen, that it could still be interpreted in a really beautiful way that honours that past use of the site as the roundhouse. So what we're able to do in finding an older map of the site was to site the roundhouse here. Um, sorry, just to site the turntable back on the site here, which is this circle here. It's 18.3 metres in diameter. There is an old remnant of a wall sitting down here on Victoria Street, so we could sort of rescale that when we put that in place. Um, so the idea was um, that the remnant turntable is returned to site um, and or celebrated, interpreted as that size of it sitting back on site. Uh, and that a series of walls, perforated sort of steel walls are put in place to give people an understanding of the scale of how big the roundhouse once was. Um, these lines coming through here are referencing the idea of railway lines coming through, coming through the site. Um, and um, we did that by by um, tracing that off um, of an old plan that we'd found of the site. The yellow tufts through here is also the, the old lineal lines of the railway lines that then once upon a time did used to run through the site. 
and rather than obviously re um, re building those or bringing them back to site, the idea is that those lines could be reinterpreted as vegetation um, and different planting across the site. One of the things that came up in consultation was the idea of an arboretum or an urban forest um, <clears throat> where um, we could create really dense shade on site and that's very much the idea on this site is to incorporate uh, species that are endemic to Tamora and to the region, but also possibly Mediterranean, the same types of climate climate um, uh, prince, uh, climate. I'm losing my words. The same climate across the globe, so that um, that they could be grown here as well to create dense shade across the site. The other idea that we had was to. Um, was to include um, the idea of interpreting steam back onto the site. Um, this is a section line. If, if you were to draw through that site, this is the section line of the roundhouse up here. Um, we were thinking about the heat on site and Craig and I had discussed the idea of water, but we wondered if something as an interpretation of water, the use of mist um, or misters, to as a cooling device on really hot days and also at night to sort of create a mystical element to have mist coming out from the floor of what was once upon a time the roundhouse to give note to give an idea of that sort of industry and scale that once used to occur on site so that was really the idea in here and you can see the interpretation of of the roundhouse as perforated metal screens that could have art information qr codes for listening to stories about the roundhouse and the turntable and how it worked um, and the men that worked there. So that's a that's a section if you were to sort of cut through the site. Um, you'll notice here that there is a path sort of linking off um, Victoria here. We've done that deliberately because we feel that there's, there's really not enough space or scale to get paths up off Victoria Street here. This is very tight. We've also got some stormwater to navigate and it's a heavy vehicle access point as well through there. We also, you'll probably notice on all of the sites, there is the, the paths are deliberately deliberately winding and curved. Um, the reasoning for that, I suppose, is our thinking that um, if we have to cap these sites because of um, remediation, um, that the level of the ground would be brought up. And in that instance, we have to get a longer run at paths to get up the grade. So that's why we've attempted always to sort of show the paths swinging out and around with the thinking that the ground is probably going to have to come up in some places to navigate what we imagine is contamination within the site. Um, the hope obviously within that site is that is that a fence comes down at some point because, um, you know, understanding was that the um, residents used to walk through this site um, merrily, um, but that in the interim um you know, if this is something that really needs particular work, that there could be a fence on part of the site while that work is being done so that the rest of the site would be revegetated and open to the public. So we kind of understand that it could happen in two parts. We also know that there used to be a coal stage sort of in this area here and that there were pits in there. So there's the understanding of the unknown in those areas in terms of what could be found in those sites. Um, I'll talk about Camp Street in the next plan, but the idea is for the path that is currently out on the street on Camp Street, that it's realigned and is actually sat back on the verge. So we're sort of within the the fence, if you like, and the and the gutter or the, the road treatment, so that there is a pedestrian, fully formed pedestrian and cycle path that is up that takes you down to Britannia Street and across the crossing here. Um, we did get feedback from residents that this is sort of very uh, dangerous and, and difficult to navigate. Um, and so the hope would be here that we could have um, a standardised and formalised pedestrian crossing to get across the railway corridor here. Um, Transport for New South Wales has requested that the whole of the railway, cor whole of the railway corridor is fenced which we are showing the whole way on the plan because of the change of use from um, what is sort of an informal landscape area to something that's more of a formalised landscape area. So you'll notice on all of the plans that the railway corridor is now shown as a fenced line and that the landscape on either side of that is, is open. Um, so the idea here is that the path would sort of connect up to Britannia Street and the Oval to get through here. Um, and then we have this existing dam up the top 
um, our understanding in discussions with council is that it um, is a, it holds stormwater and is topped up by effluent um, and is used for irrigation around Tamora. Um, our understanding is that, that that use will be separated and that the effluent will be removed from it so it will be a stormwater dam. It's currently used for irrigation. It will still continue to be used for irrigation, but there is a possibility that it could be rethought um, for some additional detention, like holding back of water in the top part of this um, dam in here. At that time, it would mean that the, the slopes, the sides of the dam could be rethought. Um, I think you can sort of see on this um, eastern side, it's very steep and eroding, a lot of weeds starting to sort of accumulate around the dam as well, so that that could be regraded and revegetated so that this could actually become more of a landscape element within the site, still with the understanding that its use is for irrigation, um, but contributing to the habitat that we're creating next door with all of this vegetation, uh, sort of connecting in into that and also thinking about the overall storm, stormwater management around um, Tamora, particularly the lower lying areas through here. There is a, a path that is shown along here and that is the high point sort of in the walk where you can actually have really lovely views back towards the silos from there. And given that the site is so flat, it's actually quite lovely to get to that point where it's nice and high and you can see out from there. So that's a sort of like a, a lookout point from that point there. So that path then gets you back to Victoria Street, which is the formalised pedestrian crossing there on Victoria Street. So that is that part of the site. Um, moving on to good siding number four, which is the site directly to the north, the roundhouse site. Um, again, the legend that was on LO2 still refers to this, so the colours and the symbols and everything that are shown on this plan are the same for that. Um, <clears throat> So this part of the site, the, the orange um, dots refer to formalised existing pedestrian paths. So we're trying to connect into those wherever we can so that we're, we're connecting into infrastructure that is already there. Um, as mentioned before, in relation to Camp Street, um, the path that is currently out there within the, the, the fog line or the, the road lining um, is used as a pedestrian and cycle path is now realigned and brought within the site, within the verge. This swale is rethought just to try to get a little bit more um, use of water through here and also sending it into the site through here. Um, in discussions with Grain Corp, um, their preference would be for vehicle access off Victoria Street rather than off Camp Street. However, that's something that would still have to be navigated with um, uh, New South Wales, a uh, transport for New South Wales, just to ensure that that is suitable. But we are showing that as being the main use is off Victoria Street. Um, along Camp Street, there is a there is a dotted line that, that goes into the next plan as well that shows the lease area by Grand Corp. Um, the area to the to the north um, and, and the west of Grand Corp is an open um, paddock-like landscape at the moment that is currently slashed. It has no trees on it. It has no discernible vegetation as such in there. And one of the things that we discussed with um, Transport for New South Wales and Grain Court was if we could include that in this area as part of the master plan. We were very much also thinking about the silos and how this site sits in relation to the silos and the viewing potential of the silos from this site. Um, in our discussions with Transport for New South Wales, they're not um, interested in the idea of um, projections being shown on the silos from the town side, from the eastern side, um, because that would have to go across um, uh, the railway corridor and, and the use. But it is um, it's something they would consider from the west. So what we were thinking about was the use of um, the silos for projections. And when I say projections, I mean artworks, movies, um, soccer games, how good would it have been watching the Matildas on, you know, big silos last night? Um, and thinking about um, the use of them as a canvas for those sorts of things. Um, the timing of that would be really something to discuss with council, whether that's once a week, once a month, once a year, twice a year, don't know, but really thinking about how these silos could be used for projections and how we could also create paths and sort of viewing areas off paths that could see that. 
Um, once again, we're imagining that uh, site will require some level of remediation because, again, we have no idea of what past use has been in there. So the idea in this part of the site was for um, a raised boardwalk, um, fiberglass reinforced polymer, like a, a grated boardwalk, if you like, so that there is no ground contact for the people using the site, you're up off the ground, um, and that these are like viewing areas and this is a path that loops off it that you can sit here and watch the silos from here. We also have included uh, two sections of, of parking areas along Camp Street and chosen the areas that are opposite the intersections from the roads. Um, so that people can sit in their cars and also look across to the silos from here to what is going on and also see the railway station from the other side, which is also really quite beautiful because you get to see the extent of the station from this side as well. Um, we toyed with lots of ideas about what we could do with the landscape in there as far as ground treatment is concerned from trying to grow a crop in there, whether that was weed or canola. Um, understandably, a lot of people concerned about um spraying fallow crops um, particular times of year being flammable we understand that completely um so as much as we'd love to do that um because it really sort of speaks about the history of the site i think connecting the site to crops and, and growing a crop in town um we sort of then thought well i mean the other opportunity here would be to grow or recreate or refabricate the natural grasslands that once existed around tomorrow which is um <coughs> a grassland <laughs> A grassland with um with with daisies and also saltbush sort of plantings, ground cover saltbush plantings through there. So we've thought about the recreation of that into those areas. So a low maintenance and low water use landscape. Having said that, we were thinking that we would try to get the swale to sort of opportunistically sort of flow out into this area to hydrate the landscape rather than just sending it to stormwater and ending up back. In, um, in the concrete drain. So that was something we were thinking about with Camp Street on this side. Um, I might just sort of get up the, um, the section of, of that side to show you that as an idea. There's our nighttime sky viewing one. It's this one down here. You notice that there's a line through it. It says section DD. So when you're looking for the section lines, you can find them on the section page. So this is this idea here um, <clears throat> of using the silos for projections at night. Um, <clears throat> I know there'll be discussions about the use of trees or planting of trees in these areas. Um, <clears throat> the silos themselves are 19, a bit over 19 metres. Most of the trees we're showing in maturity are sort of between eight and say maybe 12 metres tops. Um, we're always thinking about the notion of clear stem trees so that you can see through them that the canopy is sitting up. And obviously there'll be some places where you're looking across that the canopy will end up blocking the silos, but really we're thinking about that use of sort of being under the trees, thinking about the shade from the west and being able to look up at the projections on the silo is really more what we're thinking about because um, that western sun on that side is something it would be lovely to try to get some shade through there on the site. So that is um, this that part of the site, the Camp Street side of, part of the site. Um, the little Camp Street part of the site um, features um, what was the grains shed, the old grain shed in this area. That is the shape of where it was and good siding number four, which is this railway siding in here. Um, one of the things we noticed when we are on site and we noted it on the analysis plan was um, sort of just uh, people driving through the site. There's no... There's no, there's nothing stopping vehicles driving through the site um, and that seems to be a use, but there doesn't seem to be a function associated with that in terms of where those vehicles have got to get to. There's obviously a signals box here, but that access can be off here, off Victoria Street. We're still waiting to find out the tenure of this shed here, but again, that access is off Victoria Street through here. So as part of the master plan, we have noted that vehicles are removed out of this part of the site and it becomes a park, a site for pedestrians. We're noting along the way where emergency access can get in and out of the site as required, but really trying to dissuade all vehicle access through here to give this over to pedestrians so it becomes a parkland area. Um, as I said, this is the old grains shed in this area here. Um, we did look at the idea about trying to recreate the idea of a shed there with a the structure, but the size of it is huge. So we then started thinking about really honouring that, I suppose, with the idea of trees and planting trees there. And we wondered if those trees could be sort of talking trees, if you like, if there were QR codes associated with them that those trees could reference 
particular characters or people and or jobs associated associated with the railway if choosing people gets too difficult um, so that there is history associated with those trees as you walk through it and you can hear and learn about those things. That then obviously then creates a lovely shaded sort of gravel space um, with a beautiful avenue of trees to be able to sit under and, and use. We're very much thinking about this as being deciduous and other plantings in this area as being evergreen, just so that they stand out and also that so that seasonally there's some variation across the side. And when you get to LO6 and you have a look at the, the ledge and what that means, the orange colour plantings or and or yellow colour plantings are deciduous and the greens are evergreen, so more native. So that sort of gives you an under, understanding of the palette. There's variation within the palette. Along Little Camp Street here, we have our open stormwater concrete drains. And as part of the master plan, we are suggesting that these are returned to landscape elements. Um, there's obviously a lot of requirements as far as um, the gradient into those open landscape swales and how they work. Um, in discussion with council's um, engineer, we also understand that we really need to do a um, a, you know, stormwater study across the site to just find out how how fast the my, my understanding is the velocity of water is incredibly fast running through here, and whether there is potential, if not just here, for again a little bit more detention, so that rather than being very linear, at some point it bows out, and we try to hold a little bit of water back to send it out. Depending on the volume of water and how that works, that then may mean this element becomes fenced as well. So that's something we would have to look at at the detailed design as to how that works. But the the hope or the thinking there would be that um, getting more trees, more vegetation, more cooling into the site rather than it being an engineered hard concrete structure in this area. Um, when we were looking at, oh, here it is here. It's the idea of it here. This is Little Camp Street through here. I think the opportunity for Little Camp Street too is that, oh, sorry, I'll go back to that, is that it's a real lane that can be used for those trucks that are going through the site or not, or maybe it's just for local use for the residents that have access off the back of Little Camp Street and also potentially a shared pedestrian pathway as well through there. We've got power lines to navigate in terms of vegetation, how that works, but thinking about this as a vegetated swale that becomes an integral element to the site. Thinking about um, Loftus Street, we noted on the analysis plan that this is very much an area just beyond the terminus that you can really see from the main street when you're looking down. You can't, well, you can see the tops of silos from everywhere, but you can actually really see this point. So we were thinking about an entry statement in this area that sort of brought people along so that they might see something down there and think, what is that? And, and go down there and have a look at it. The use of the number 489 is tomorrow's number as far as 489 kilometres from Sydney on the railway line is something that we wanted to embed in a lot of things as a reminder of the history of the site. We're thinking about seeding, again, perforated core 10 walls uh, and the use of steel to create like this sort of um, post-industrial landscape, if you like. Again, looking at vegetation and trees, but always you can see through a tree. A tree is not a brick wall. Um, I know some people may look at this plan and think there's too many trees, and I, I think that's sort of visually the way they tend to be shown, but trees are, you know, can be sort of quite see-through um, and it's the positioning of them. So we wanted to show within a render this notion of vegetation in this site and planting and sort of returning this to a parkland area. There's a lot more inter, um, information on here in relation to the thinking of this part of the site as well. Um, as far as the siding, the good siding um, line, good siding number four, um, one of the conversations with um, David Scobie, the Heritage Advisor, was in relation to um, uh, potentially putting rolling stock back on the site, which is the carriage, like the carriages that you can sort of manually move up and down. So that was the idea in that zone was to create um, sort of a function back on that line for tourism and for fun was to be able to use that siding and to think about bringing back um, the rolling stock onto this site, which ends here and ends sort of back in this area, obviously within the fenced fenced in area of the railway, sorry, outside of the fenced in area of the railway corridor. That's again, the proposed fence line is to keep everyone safe, the railway line separate, which is currently not fenced. Um, <clears throat> so just as far as looking at um, those sections, if we were to look at a section through the site. The 
this is this area in here. So <clears throat> this is a little cap straight here. This is if we were to cut a line through the side. <clears throat> this sort of um, revegetated landscape swale zone, additional trees, the creation of open space with planting. So you'll probably notice on the mask plan where you look at it, that there's kind of areas of grass or, or ground cover for just informal use in between the plantings. This is our existing siding here. And the idea is that we could cut it to create seating facing that way, but facing west and also facing east so that it becomes um, a multi-use. The idea of rolling stock, um, I know in the first meeting we had with council, again, there was concern about a wheat crop there and as much as I'd love to do it, I understand completely how difficult that is because we are dry land farmers too. Um, so again, this notion of, of the daisy, the native grass landscape of bringing that back into it, which is wheat-like in its sort of visual, like visually how they look too. So we're thinking that was something that we could do here. And again, there's the, the fencing along the rail corridor. This is the talking trees one. This is the good signing number four. Thinking about, you know, a beautiful, elegant line of deciduous trees that are, you know, head height, you can walk through them and under to enjoy, to have seating, play bocce, have seating areas, have long lunches, which I know happens on the railway station um, um, platform as well, um, and thinking about dedicating the trees to either, you know, a, a person associated with the railway or a job associated with the railway. So that is that site there. Um, the main street, uh, the main Park Street entrance coming up to the um, to the railway station is linking on that's sort of the end of the goods uh, the the rolling stock line is here so it, it ends here that's an unused line um, again that's the fencing off of the railway corridor that way again the continued idea of um, revegetating the, the open the concrete swales into landscape elements um, and creating these areas of open space within within planting within this zone. These darker trees are existing trees, which I understand were planted by a gentleman by the name of Eric Hill, um, and they are adding to the idea of this forest. This is actually a really lovely treed area. It's lovely to stand under. Um, there's quite a lot of drainage issues along here as well, which would have to be resolved as part of this. Um, it's quite wet in a lot of places through here. Um, we wondered if this was also a place where additional car parking could be controlled off Copeland Street because we've got no vehicles coming through here anymore. But in terms of controlled and defined parking areas off Copeland Street, we wondered if that was a possibility. Um, so this area here, which is to the southern side of Park Street and directly opposite or connected very much to the railway station here, this is um, the render or the idea for this um, zone in here. And this was arrived at and discussed with um the wonderful students of tomorrow high school um we've got quite a lovely level change these are all existing trees that are, we're showing here we're not showing anything that's not there um we're thinking about stepping it down and creating a yarning circle or a seating area in that area that has some formal setting but also informal setting by way of rocks the reintroduction again of native grasses um, and ground covers and thinking about swales and how we can run water through this to opportunistically water things um, to get our equal access to work from this side, obviously we can't get it to work as soon as we put steps in like that. So you'll notice on the plan there is a looping path here that takes you out and through. That can obviously connect back that way as well, but we can't get equal access obviously down steps, so we have to find another way into it. We feel quite um, sure that we can we can make that work. Um, we use the imagery and the scattling off the existing fences to create bollards through here. So this is a safe pedestrian zone. So it has some connection um, back to the heritage of the, of the railway station, but it's sitting down and out of the view line of it as well so that the railway station is the most prominent element in the landscape at that point. So that was the idea for that sort of zone in there. Um, <clears throat> as I mentioned before, Transport for New South Wales are not interested in um, the idea of projections from this side of the um, the railway corridor, but we wondered on this top corrugated iron walkway, which is through here, which is above the silos, whether or not we could 
um, consider the idea of like a ticker tape that runs around that it's very New York. Um, we're thinking about um, words or images um, in the event of an emergency information being able to be put up there, um, congratulating members of the community for things that have happened, those sorts of ideas. We wondered if we if there was some way we could use that um, that top section. That section can be seen from the main street, can certainly be seen from council chambers. Um, so it's it's it is it's very high. And we wondered if that could be a really exciting thing to do for tomorrow is to have that as an idea um, across the site. To the railway station itself, we sort of changed tack on the on the plans here and made the plans of Portrait here to sort of connect into the um the park areas of Crowley Street. Um, so through the community consultation of this area, there was discussions of extending, there was lots of discussions about things here actually. Um, so the stage area, sorry, I'll start with that. So the stage area is here, the existing stage area. Um, comments from it's great to, it's facing the wrong way. We know that it's got a lot of drainage problems. It also possibly has a few issues too with surveillance in terms of how you can see through that structure. So we're just looking about how we could retain the structure or the essence of the structure, but do a few minor modifications to it to sort of make it more functional. And one of the thinkings on that was, um, you'll notice here, we put one of the walls back in, we pulled all the walls out, but to leave the southern wall in, to pull out these walls so that you can actually sit in there um, and reuse it. And then you can also face the north. And in that area there, we're showing a mound so that people could actually sit on a mound in here could be trees in here for shade and it could people performing on the stage could face west if they wanted to they could also face north so it just kind of makes it a little bit more um flexible just in terms of how it could be used it's obviously got power and things like that in there um the idea was to take the shipping container out of there and move it over to the community garden there is some support um from platform y for a community garden on the old tennis court um that is there. So we're showing um, rotation crops on site there, a central tree, um, seeding areas, the shipping container over there now used for um, uh, tools, the storage of tools, but also put potentially selling of food out the window um, and using it as a notice board for the community. So it becomes a little community hub, this area in here. Um, comments that these paths are not for everyone, they're not accessible as far as grade is concerned. So you'll notice that this is the old path that is shown under here. This is the proposed path. So we're just pulling the grade out at this point. So the path, rather than being through here, actually comes out through here and connects to the community garden. This is an arbor with plantings over the top. Um, that then connects us into a path that heads north and also connects into the car park that way. Um, the footpath at the moment is the lowest point on site. So it's kind of reimagined here as a swale, sending stormwater running through here, additional trees for shade in, in this area as well. Um, the playground area, we are showing the idea of a fence across the front of Crowley Street. Part of the site is fenced from the tennis courts. We're proposing a fence through here with beautiful gates at entrance points to create a really beautiful threshold into the park from Crowley Street and also at the known stormwater crossing point through here, which is really the only way to get into the site when the stormwater is moving um, through this site here. This path is kind of reimagined, again, sort of takes off and zips around. Some of it is retained for use of barbecues and seating areas, but the path itself becomes almost like a play element as far as these playgrounds are concerned. This existing playground, and the idea here is that the playground will be upgraded to include um, um, some Wiradjuri themed um, play or, inter or sort of um, interpreted theme play areas um, within that site uh, using the, the shade sail structure and an upgrade of the play equipment itself. This site to the um, west of here is, is the possible site for the playground. A, an additional playground in here so that this is more of an imaginative space in here. Um, one of the ideas that was discussed was whether this could be a good spot for a junior pump track in relation to its relationship with um, 
with the skating area in here, but this is for younger kids, this junior pump track. And I understand that there is a pump track for elsewhere, but this is for young kids in particular. It's a barbecue area that's existing. Thinking about this old slab here, the wall is falling down as whether that could be also an additional barbecue and sort of seating area. So this becomes more of a family space in this zone with community use of garden and community use of the stage more into this space. Um, about the extension of um, the parking area, the overnight parking area. So this existing line here is the existing um, fence as it, as it stands at the moment. It's sort of doubled, if you like, that area. We've reorientated it to try to fit more in there and also to create some parking here, equal access parking down here that sort of connects into this space here or for a small minibus into this area and connects into the path through the, that this way. Um, our understanding is that Platform Y may at some point want to do a coffee window up here. Um, so the orange is the idea that it's still the road. We're just painting the road and using bollards to define where pedestrians safely can walk and where vehicles go. So this could be a coffee window here. There's quite a there's a, a slope through here, which we think we can get to work. These are the existing contours down to here uh, that gets us down into the information centre. What we're really trying to do is to capture the information centre on a pathway so that it made sense so that people, you know, are up in the railway station doing a tour, having a look. They might get a coffee. They come down here. They go to the information centre. They get their bearings and they go off for a walk and, you know, do the whole loop of the site um, and or do part of the site. So this is the existing information centre here. So it's an attempt to create safe pedestrian access to the, to the centre so that... Um, it's used by people coming to the site. Um, this is an area where there could be bike hire, whether that's um, standard push bikes or e-bikes, picnic tables, barbecue facility, so that there's a little hub up here that is formed, which is on the existing road. Um, there is an existing fence on the railway corridor there and we'd be looking very much to sort of screen that part of the corridor and include shade trees. So it really becomes a really lovely landscape zone. Um, one of the ideas that we had um, in discussion along the way was the idea of doing um, a sort of formal garden plots ac across the site so that um, community groups, individuals, schools um, could take on one of the garden plots and do a display garden in that and that maybe that's the place to grow a crop in these very defined um, five by five metre sort of um, areas where people could take on these plots and that's what these squares are referencing the whole way along here. So they're sort of punctuated by shade trees and seeding and these square areas of raised garden beds, which again gets us around the issue of what we, we don't know what's under the soil and if we were to raise the ground, we can plant into the soil. Um, <clears throat> on this side, we've got our existing olive hedge. We've got more shade trees and we've got a path that's taking us down this way as well and also a path that's taking us this side. So both the east and the west have got connecting paths, which takes us on to the final part of the site, which we have playfully referred to as Bookhead's Park because it feels like if there's a dog that deserves a park, it's it's probably Bookhead. Um, and so just to orientate yourself, this the paths that I was just pointing out are here and here. They run all the way through to Polara Street um, from, from this side. Um, in consultation, it came up that, an off-leash dog area would be fantastic on the site and we've included that in part of the site, only part of the site here. Um, as mentioned, these are paths that connect through to Polara Street and also they cross the site, which is probably the most likely kind of desire line park, path that people will make, that they'll cross through the site to get to the mill or they'll cross through the site to get home and get into town. So it's just about defining what we imagine could be happening across the site. Um, Again, we imagine this site would have to be um, remediated. Um, these little carrots are referring to the soil, the soil most likely being brought up and then sloped down so they were up out of the ground and over the top um, as an open grass area for use again, um, which brings us to the end of um, our site here at Polara Street. And my, our understanding is that discussions with Council and Transport for New South Wales are ongoing as far as the the real need for a, pedestrian, a safe and formalised pedestrian crossing at Polara Street. Um, 
I think, you know, I rightly said, oh, we, you know, we've got to get the precinct to connect up. And someone said, no, we've got to get tomorrow to connect up. And that is obviously the more important thing is that the town is very much divided in a pedestrian sense between either side of the track here. And that something here as a formalised and safe pedestrian access would, you know, allow that to happen. And then obviously connect one day into the mill as part of the redevelopment. On this part of the site, uh, the car park is before the mill is here. So again, this is this existing concrete path and we would have to connect that up so that everything connects. So that at the end, the site is fully connected by pedestrian and cycle paths, both around and through the site um, and well vegetated. On this site, on this plan, LO6, we've done an overview of the types of vegetation based on the physical sort of characteristics of the site um, <clears throat> that is here completely open for comment um, on those. Um, so that's the, the the thinking or the overview of of the Tomorrow Railway Precinct Master Plan. Um, on the sections page, which I've sort of been through, there are a series of sections there for you to look through that give you a bit more of an understanding of how visually we sort of see the site. Um, and there's also a views page which shows some photoshopped images of again, kind of how we imagine the site, just sort of photoshopping straight onto the images. So I trust and hope that has made sense. And um, thanks for your time in allowing me to explain the concepts for the site. Thank you.